Catholic Free Statement crafted by MDC, said ZANU-PF. The ZANU-PF yesterday claimed that a recent hard-hitting letter written by Catholic bishops was full of MDC alliance fire troll, raising suspicion it could have been written by opposition party leaders Nelson Chamisa or Tendai Biti. The ruling party spokesperson, Mr. Patrick Shinamasa, told journalists last night that the allegations made by the church leaders needed to be dismissed with the contempt they deserve. They wrote a sketching communique attacking our government and our president, Emerson Munangagwa, of having done nothing to fulfill the 2018 promises and unfortunately calling our government a violator of human rights and that our country is in a crisis said Chinamasa. We dismiss these allegations with the contempt they deserve, not only as baseless but pandering to the demands of the MDCs. The language was clearly titled. In fact, you would say that the language seemed to have been written by Chamisa or Biti, but most likely Biti. Chinam Chinamasa said churches should engage Mnangagwa and Zano PF for dialogue, adding that the government had tried to fulfill the 2018 promises, including road rehabilitation, but was being hindered by sanctions that have crippled the economy. Chinamasa said Zano PF remained clear on dialogue and called on Chamisa to join the political actors dialogue platform if he was serious about discussing the solutions to the Zimbabwean crisis with Munangagwa. We are saying to the bishops, before you speak, please ask for dialogue with our president. We are open to any dialogue on any issue that affects Zimbabweans, that affects their lives, said Chinamasa. We will not allow any tendencies that precipitate us to violent situations or which give encouragement to noises that want to precipitate violent outcomes for our country. Catholic bishops recently wrote a pastoral letter calling on the government to order over human rights violations and corruption. African jurists angry over Mtetwa victimization. The letter attracted condemnation from Nangagwa, Zano PF, and top government officials. Let me now say something on the pastoral letter issued by the bishops conference they wrote a very scathing communique attacking our government and our president comrade E.D. Munangagwa accusing him of having done nothing meaning in terms of fulfilling the promises that we made in 2018 and also unfortunately calling our government a violator of human rights. This all, this, they also said our country is in a crisis. Of course, we dismiss these allegations with the contempt they deserve. Not only as baseless, but pandering to the demands of the MDCs. You know, the language was clearly tilted in fact, you would say that the language seems to have been written by either Chamisa or Biti, more likely by Biti. The all churches must know that their membership cuts across the political divide. And therefore, as they speak to the shepherds, to the, to the sheep as shepherds, they must not be seen to be banishing certain sheep out of the fold or to be aligning themselves with certain of the sheep. More so in the political arena, it doesn't come out well. It doesn't come out well. The language of vitriol is not the language that we expect from the church. We expect that the church 
will be very moderate in their language. If anything, they will also ask for permission to seek dialogue. In this case, with the president, there was no approach that we know of that our president was approached for a dialogue with the bishops' conference and refused. I know that the president has been in dialogue with many groups. As he said right at the beginning, he's a listening president. Now, if you do not want to be listened to and you are condemnatory, what objective do you want to achieve? That is the question we ask. They talk about a crisis. Of course, the economy is not performing as it should. Why? Because of sanctions. But we don't see in their letter any condemnation of sanctions. We don't see any call for the uplifting, unconditional lifting of sanctions. We also know, of course, that the current problem we have is COVID-19. And it's impacting negatively. Those lockdown regulations, the world over, are impacting negatively on the performance of our economies. We expected some acknowledgement that some of the economic challenges we are facing are because of lockdown regulations, lockdown, which all the countries are mourning about. But be that as it may, we did not see anything of the sort. Talking about progress, we wanted to refer the Bishops' Conference to the progress with regards to re-engagement and engagement. We refer them to the roads revolution going in across the country. What we are doing on the Bight Bridge to Harare, those who travel that road should be able to, to know what is going on there. And we know there is a diocese, Catholic diocese in Mutare, in Mashingo rather. When they come to Harare, they should know that there is something happening. And they should chip in and to say, no, 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 on this issue, I've come from Mashingo to Harare, this is what's happening between Mvuma and Chivu, or between Mv Chivu and Beatrice. That's what we expect them to say. We also referred them to the manner in which we have thus far tackled the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Under very limited resources, we government has done its level best to safeguard the lives of Zimbabweans. It has done its level best. And we expected that the letter would commend government for that magnificent work that government has done in that endeavor. But no, we also refer them to the ease of doing business instituted since the new dispensation. We refer them to the ongoing crackdown against corruption at all levels, resulting in the expulsion of and ex conviction of high-ranking officials in central and local authorities. We also referred them to the ongoing dams construction across the country to support agriculture through irrigation. We talk about Marwanyati, which was completed, Causeway Dam, also completed, Guayshangani, which is ongoing, and many other dam construction. Without a foundation, infrastructure foundation, roads, dams, power generation, you have no economy to talk about. We also referred them to the annual presidential farming input support scheme, which is benefiting in excess of 1.8 million households countrywide. The cotton scheme, which is benefiting in excess of 350,000 households, giving livelihoods to many, many people who we consider marginalized. We refer them to the progress we have made in bringing Chimani money and Chipinge back to normal after Cyclone Idai. All that is not acknowledged. You know how many trips our president made to Chimani money, Chipinge? That's not where it comes from. 
And I don't think there is any other place which has been visited as much as Chimaniman and Chipingi by our president, including the first lady. That also good work is not acknowledged. And we ask why. We also refer them to the progress that we are making in stabilizing the financial sector through the tightening of regulations on mobile money transfer, the temporary suspension of the stock exchange, Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, which has since reopened, and the launch of the Victoria Falls foreign denominated, foreign currency denominated stock exchange, which is in the pipeline. We also refer to them to the launch of the foreign currency exchange auction system, which has gone some way in stabilizing the exchange rate. We also refer them to the global compensation agreement with former white farmers to finalize the, or should we say, to cement and ensure the irreversibility of the land reform. That is significant. No reference to that momentous event. No reference anyway to the fact that Zimbabwe, ZANU-PF embarked on the land reform program and that is what caused sanctions. No reference to land reform, no reference to sanctions, no reference to the global compensation agreement. None. These are achievements. We refer them also to the cleaning up process on housing and residential land, which had fallen into the hands of unscrupulous land barons. And this we have done through the Uchena Land Audit Commission. We also refer them to the completion of the Kariba South Power Extension Plant, but because of rain and ZANPF, only God gives us rain. Because of no rain, we are not able to tap into the 300 megawatt power plant which was completed. But as the Kariba Dam fills up, we should be able to reap the benefits of that development. We also refer them to the Pollard Dialogue Platform, which shows our desire, the present desire, to unite the nation by carrying all views on board. No reference to Poland. And let me reiterate again here that the president has said, Chamisa is free at any time to join the platform of Poland tomorrow if he wants to. Even notwithstanding his noises about the president being Ill illegitimate, Tomorrow, if he says he's coming to the table on Poland, he's free, and I want to reiterate, he's free to join Poland dialogue process. We also refer the Bishops' Conference to the periodic dialogue which the President is constantly having with the multi-brilliant collective groups.